Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we are going to learn the interconversion of molecular representation. Molecular representations are representation of molecules or projection formulas, which are used to represent molecules having three-dimensional structure on a two-dimensional surface. In the previous video, I have discussed about the interconversion of Fischer representation to wedge representation where the molecules having one chiral center. In this video, we are going to learn the interconversion of Fischer representation to wedge representation where the molecules having two chiral centers. Let us take an example which is the molecule which is having two chiral centers. For example, let me take L tartaric acid. L tartaric acid in Fischer form this L tartaric acid as we know it has two chiral centers when we have two chiral centers it is our duty to give absolute configuration to the chiral centers so first we need to give the numbering for this Fischer representation where the C2 carbon as well as C3 carbon or chiral centers because these chiral cent these centers are surrounded by or bonded to four different ligands. So let us give the absolute configuration for the C2 carbon as well as C3 carbon. If you see the C2 carbon, the ligands, if you give the priority, which will go for anti-clockwise, but the fourth position is horizontal, so the <coughs> C2 position is R. When you go for third carbon, after giving priority, it is also traveling towards anti-clockwise. The fourth priority is the horizontal, so the C3 carbon also R. So that means this tartaric acid is 2R, 3R, absolute configurations at its chiral centers. And if you observe the terminal ligands are COOH, which are same. So first category, we are taking this kind of molecule where it has two chiral centers and the terminal groups are same. So this Fischer representation we are going to convert into wedge representation. As we know the Fischer representation always give you eclipsed confirmation right and the <coughs> vertical lines always present away from the observer and the horizontal lines are near to the observer it is necessary to understand once you convert these representations from which Fisher to wedge representation we should not invert the configurations once you start with the 2 or 3 r configuration in Fisher you have to end up with the 2 or 3 r configuration wedge also when you see this molecule <coughs> here the COOH and COOH these two are present in plane they are touching the plane and this center the ligands which are attached to the chiral centers are out of the plane that means observer can see this molecule in two ways from observer can observe this molecule from right side or observer can observe from this molecule from left side so two possibilities can have but always give the numbering to this molecule <coughs> right so now observer can observe from the right side as well as left side so from this understanding we can convert this fisher representation to wedge representation first we will see the molecule from the right side okay or left side whatever so first we will start the observation of this molecule from the left side When the observer is observing from the left side, from the left side, you see 1, 2, 3, 4, keep always numbering. And when he observed the COOH and the C2 and C3 carbon as well as COOH, C4, COOH, all are in plane. You can see COOH and COOH. You have to imagine and always observe from the left side here. 
the 1, 2, 3 and 4. And from the left side, if the observer is observing at the C2 carbon, always he is observing the H which is near to the observer as well as OH which is away from the observer when he observed from the left side. So, observer when he observed the OH is away from the observer and H is near to the observer. Once he travels towards the C3 carbon, C3 chiral center, again the OH which is near to the chiral center and H which is away from the observer, <coughs> right? But when we write in organic chemistry or stereochemistry, we won't write in this way. So always we'll try to write in the zigzag form. So if you want to write this in zigzag form, before complete, that means before converting to the zigzag form, first we have to find out the absolute configuration. I told you already, you should not change the absolute configurations. Once you start with 3 or 2 or configuration, it should end with the 2 or 3 or configuration. Let us see that. 1, 2, 3. So it is traveling towards anticlockwise, but the fourth position is near to the observer. So 2 or as well as in the third position. At the third position, again, the priorities goes clockwise direction where the fourth priority is away from the observer so 3 are configuration so it didn't change so now this this structure now we are we need to convert to the zigzag form so once if you want to convert the zigzag form keep the c2 carbon as it is and the c3 carbon you just rotate 180 degrees so that it becomes like this again don't forget to write the numbering and c2 configuration at the c2 sorry c2 carrel center we didn't change any changes in the stereochemistry of the ligands whereas third carbon c2 carrel center we just everything we reverse it that means oh which is near to the observer in this position at the zigzag position it exactly reverse and as well as like this the h which is away from the observer come to the near to the observer so now we have to observe the absolute configuration again the C2 carbon no changes so 2R and C3 carbon 1, 2, 3 travels anti-clockwise but the fourth position is away near to the observer so 2R, 3R. So in this way we can convert the Fisher projection from the sulfur, Fisher projection to the wedge, wedge projection and coming to the observe, observer, observer if he observe from the right side observer if we observe from the right side what happens so again you can clearly understand that there is should be numbering and once you the observer observed from the right side again we can draw like this because COOH and COOH are present uh, in the plane COH and COH are in the plane and when he observe from the right side he can look this fourth car COH like this and the third one like this and second one and first one so in this way this observer is observing from the right side so if we observe from that means observer if we observe at the C3 carbon okay C3 chiral center the H which is near to the observer and OH which is away from the observer so OH is near away from the observer and H is near to the observer. Likewise, if it travels towards the second chiral center and OH which is near to the observer and H is away from the observer. So if you see that 3R, 2R configuration can see in this structure. Now we need to convert this structure to the zigzag form so that we will keep the C3 carbon as it is but C2 carbon will rotate by 180 degrees. You can see it becomes zigzag and C3 carbon no changes of the stereochemistry of ligands whereas the C2 carbon changes by inverting like OH which is earlier which is near to the observer now it becomes away from the observer. So in this way we can convert the Fisher projection of the molecules which are having two chiral centers. Here we are discussing the molecule which is having terminal groups are same. 
So if you uh, if the observer is observing from the left side as well as the right side both ways, we didn't invert the configuration of the Fisher form to the wedge after converting to successfully converted to wedge. Next we can take another example where the terminal groups are terminal groups are different and the molecule has two chiral center let me take best example which is called d erythrose d erythrose again it has two chiral center okay first we need to give the numbering and it has two chiral centers and the second chiral center c2 chiral center which is r configuration as well as third chiral center which is again r chiral center so that means these two chiral centers having absolute configurations 2r as well as 3r respectively now we are going to convert this fissure conformation of the d erythrose to the wedge representation successfully as we know that the fissure representation tells you that it is always in eclipsed conformation and on the vertical line vertical line ligand always present away from the observer and uh, horizontal line ligands present near to the observer so observer now he can observe this molecule from either ways that is either from left side or he can observe this from right side so first we will take from left side observer if we observe from the left side what happens see if you carefully observe this molecule from the left side first you should not forget that give the numbering and i told you already the cho and ch2o which are present in plane so give numbering one two three four and the second and third carbon are chiral centers now observe observer is observing from the left side where he is observing at the c2 carbon h is near to the observer you see whereas oh is away from the observer again when he travel toward the c3 carbon he is observing the h h which is near to the observer as well as oh which is away from the observer I told you already once we change from the fissure representation to wedge it should not invert the configuration let us check the configuration one two three it is traveling towards anti-clockwise direction but the fourth priority is uh, near to the observer so two r and third one one two three it is again traveling towards anti-clockwise direction and uh, fourth priority is near to the observer so two r three r so we have successfully converted that means interconverted from the fissure representation of erythrose to the wedge representation and one more task is to make this molecule into wedge so to come to convert this wedge representation i'm just keeping the c3 c2 carbon as it is and uh, just rotating the c3 carbon by 180 degrees where the stereochemistry of the ligands reverse see here the h is which is near to the observer it becomes away from the observer and oh which is away from the observer it becomes near to the observer again if you check the configurations absolute configurations they are again 2r and 3r there is no change in the configuration so in this way you can <coughs> interconvert the fissure representation to wedge representation and now observer can observe in another case this molecule in right side direction too let us see that right right side direction and convert this fissure representation to the wedge representation suppose the observer is observing from the right side direction again don't forget to give the numbering see you can see the CHO as well as CH2OH are in plane okay they are in plane and C3 as well as C2 centers are chiral which are having four different ligands now the c3 observer when he looks the c3 chiral center 
which is near to the observer the oh which is near to the observer you see carefully oh which is near to the observer and h which is away from the observer when he travels and he observes second c2 carbon c2 chiral center again you can observe the oh which is near to the observer and h which is away from the observer now we need to check cross check the absolute configurations now i am checking the c3 carbon c3 chiral center absolute configuration 1 2 3 it is traveling and clockwise direction and the fourth pair it is away from the observer so 3 r and uh, second carbon 1 2 3 again it is traveling clockwise direction and fourth pair is away from the observer so 2 r and 3 r now we can convert this molecule to the jigja confirmation and i am keeping the third carbon as it is and c2 center i am rotating by 180 degrees so c3 carbon i have the stereochemistry of the ligand same no change at all but the c2 chiral center before that the oh which is near to the observer now after rotation the oh is away from the observer and h which is near to the observer if you identify the absolute configurations at c2 as well as c3 again you will see the same configuration so if you observe carefully, after successful confirm successful conversion, interconversion of this Fisher representation, we never change that or we never interconvert the absolute configurations of the molecules which are having two chiral centers. And we successfully discuss it two different molecules where it has where they have two chiral centers and the terminal groups are same and terminal groups are different in the both case. We have successfully interconverted the molecules to the wedge representation without changing their absolute configurations. So, likewise, you can interconvert different kind of molecules. For example, we can interconvert this D tartaric acid from Fischer representation to wedge representation or L erythrose or d 3 os or l 3 os or different kind of molecules which are in Fisher representation to wedge representation successfully without the change in their absolute configurations. Thank you for watching this video. I hope this video clearly explains you the interconversion of Fisher representation to wedge representation of the molecules which are having two chiral centers. Thank you once again.